Hi, I'm Daniel Putman at the Center for Social Norms and Behavioral Dynamics, and I'm presenting my paper, Sharing Covariate Risk and Networks Theory and Evidence. Um, and so the classic story, right, of risk pooling is idiosyncratic, or it's uncorrelated across the cluster. And so basically, if I have a good year, I pay you. If I have a bad year, you pay. Um, however, a lot of the risk that we care about is actually covariate or correlated risks. So things like food price spikes or financial crises, things like natural disasters, and of course, pandemics. Um, and so in this model, I'm basically thinking about people are risk tolerant or risk averse. Um, and then kind of using these two types and thinking about how they would transact covariate risk um, with, uh, within networks. And so uh, this, this, uh, this model basically has the risk averse, uh, they shift their risk over to the risk tolerant. Um, and so if these, uh, these risk tolerant people have kind of high but uh, risky consumption, let's say they have a little premium here, um, and then the risk averse have really smooth um, but, but, but lower consumption. Um, and so the, uh, the risk tolerant basically asks this, as, um, excuse me, mini insurance. Um, and so then to think about this in networks, um, what, what I do is I think about the optimal networks and I think about the worst case networks. And so if you think about this really simple network where we've got a group over here and a group over here, this uh, this case where there's there's uh, there, uh, there's kind of no sort of matching, it's going to be the optimal scenario because it basically means that uh, the risk averse and the risk tolerant people are going to be next to each other in networks and so they can transact this risk and risk. And the opposite is basically all the risk averse people are over here and all the risk tolerant people are over here, right? And so that's going to be the worst case because they're not going to transact that risk at all. Um, and so here's the actual data that I work with. Um, and so this is one of the villages that I work with. And so basically um, this, uh, this village network is going to have a connection if people, um, right, if they trust each other and um, it's going to have a connection if they've exchanged gifts and the reciprocal gift gift. Um, and so uh, then, uh, then I also have risk aversion. Um, and so, right, you'll see that um, there's others uh, risk-loving people, right? So purple, a little risk-neutral, kind of teal. Green is kind of uh, the more, these, uh, these like risk-tolerant people. And then we have the bright yellow, are going to be the risk averse people. Um, and so when we actually take this to data, we see there's a 2.1 percentage point reduction in the probability of matching that's associated with a one standard deviation increase in the absolute difference in risk preferences. So this is, um, it's actually been robust to a lot of different specification choices, uh, you know, putting in covariates, et cetera. Uh, and it's also consistent with, with, uh, with, 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 with some evidence from, from, uh, from previous lab experiments. Um, right, and so we tend to believe the results. Um, and, uh, so, so what this means is basically the losses uh, that are due to a sort of matching kind of matching with people who have risk preferences like yourself are in the order of about maybe $5 a year. Although these might actually be much larger if, um, right? I think that, I think that the estimates of risk preferences might, I think underestimate the risk aversion uh, that actually um, right, is taking place with the um, But still, uh, the networks are pretty well designed for this. Uh, Right, uh, right. Uh, so the worst case scenario is zero, and the best case, um, right, is 100. They're about actually, um, excuse me, 75 percent of the way to optimal. Um, and so there's uh, there's there's a different way we can look at this, and so not just looking at the network, but kind of looking at larger communities within the network. And when we do this, we actually see um, uh, uh, just I uh, just I uh, just I uh, just I uh, uh, just kind of a great deal of attenuation. Um, in the degree of assorted of matching. Um, and this is kind of an interesting wrinkle because you only need to take a step beyond people's kind of other uh, close networks to kind of see this. Um, and so, uh, so, so, uh, so, uh, so if this says what your appetite, um, I encourage you to look at the paper. Um, so this is going to be, uh, this, uh, this is on my website right now um, and I'm currently revising it. And so right, if you have any comments, I would love to hear them um, and I'm happy to ask to, 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 of course, excuse me, answer any questions in the chat. Um, and so just do my references. Great, cheers.